Unlike overheating, dust is a real killer. If you do it right or wrong, it can wet on your turbines in under a minute. Over time, the damage from it builds up unseen without warnings. If you're lucky, you might get one engine showing lower exhaust gas temps and RPMs, which can be a sign of dust. But usually, it just gives instant critical engine vibration in one or both engines, which can degrade over time to engine loss and fire. When it happens, you're usually too low to do anything about it, other than hope you literally scrape through and don't start rolling. Engine vibration is often shown by the red warning lights on the front left panel, ekran messages and the Elmar's text message top left. Note, sometimes if you miss it, you won't see the warning light in ekran messages afterwards. All you have is proof, might be a flamed out engine. It's probably dust if you lose an engine while low, without ice warnings, and you didn't get hit or see rotors flying. Except for an obvious hard collision or getting shot, from my current testing it's only overheating or dust that causes engine vibration. Now, showing all the tests would give you epilepsy from the sped up dust planes clipping through the cockpit. And it's just not fun viewing. So instead you get a wall of numbers. It's not even a good spread of numbers, nor that I intend to run this many tests. But I was looking for patterns, trying to see if I could suss out what killed me faster. And then see if I could repeat those results consistently. That failed. Drag files seem to replay failure with fast forwarding to the second without vibration. So I'm guessing that it's either a random element based on your spawned airframe, or there might be more variables I couldn't figure out, like what kind of sand or grass you're flying across. So don't take this table as an absolute guide to formulas of when you will die from dust. I'm jumping to conclusions and what it means, so pause and draw your own conclusions if you like, or comment below if you've noticed other factors and correlations. Some isolated factors I've tested, which I don't think affects dust wear, is ambient dust days or temperature, side slip, banking, rudder, collective power, compressor outlet air pressure, wind, how far above sea level you are while still in the dust, going up or down slopes, hopping into or out of the dust effects, doing full collective power vertical takeoffs and landings. None of them seem to induce dust failure earlier. I believe it has to do with your dust cloud, or rather there being a dust cloud near you. The closer you are to your dust, either by being slow or more importantly low, or both, the faster you're wear in your engines and you'll lose an engine. If you're completely stationary, then the dust cloud stops forming and you're safe-ish again, so you should be able to remain the ground at any throttle setting for a very long time before it affects you. Somewhere between 75 and probably 116 kilometers per hour, you become mostly immune to dust, even when at 4 meters above ground. Similarly, somewhere above 12 meters, you become mostly immune regardless of speed. Although at 12 meters it took 8.5 hours of flight in those conditions to cause vibrations. Now there is another wrinkle. I've read some comments that the engine anti-icings bleeder to the front also activates dust protection, or maybe it should. However, I found at 2 meters or less it accelerates engine vibration, sometimes after increasing temps to non-critical level. With engine anti-icing, if there was dust cloud at 2 meters above ground, it's killed my engine in 47 seconds. If you're not in dust, or maybe 4 plus meters above the ground, anti-icing doesn't seem to accelerate the vibration. Now the fix for dust is simple. Flip the dust protection switch down. The PZU directs some bleed air back to the front of the engine and vents out some of the dust particles collected in the separator. Dust protection's bleed air makes your engine lose a bit of oomph and generates a little more heat. So if you're barely maintaining lift, then watch putting on dust protection doesn't crash you. And if you're in icy conditions and you really need to be low, Maybe keep the anti-icing on, but stay above 4 meters from the dirt. This is Falk. Join me in the next video for a little on how the rotors work and RPM issues. Cheers.